What is up everyone? James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 17 Backtrack Battles. Today we are still using this cool team that features the idea between Slowking, Marowak, Tapu Koko, Gashadon, Tapu Bulu, and Arcanine. And some people have been wondering like where the team originates. I got some comments like um Jack the Battler or was it um well, there were a few people that people want to know, like, where I got the idea from. But this was something that's been used ever since, I don't know, I think it was, like, 2012, 2013, actually. And I got the idea just because I've been looking at some of the top cut results of some of the events. Like, there was one uh, in the New Jersey Midseason Showdown, uh, piloted by one of my friends, Jio. There's... There was Modern Gamer who got, I believe, top 16 at regional, and I think day two at nationals with Slowking, Gashon. And the fact that Slowking started rising up, especially we saw players like Poke Alex and Justin Karras actually use Slowking. Decided I want to use it. Oh, we looks like we're going to get a rematch. Oh, this is beautiful. I actually wanted a rematch against this person. If you didn't check out yesterday's episode, I highly recommend you do. But we did face this person. This was our only loss yesterday. So I do want to play this. Uh, a lot better, a lot better than I want, than I did a few days ago. So, how do I want to handle this? How do I want to handle this? Uh, let's see. I'm thinking just going... To be honest, I kind of just want to go Slow King plus Arcanine once again. Does seem very solid. I think I want to gash it on a Marok in the back. I kind of want to go my game one, like what I did in game one, because I don't think there was anything wrong with game one. I unfortunately just missed a bunch of moves that really just hurted me. Missing Toxic turn one, missing a Muddy Water that was boosted onto Cartana, which might have put in that Surf range where I could have knocked out Porygon too. Someone mentioned to, uh, pointed that out to me the other day. So we'll see if we can, you know, uh, get a bit more lucky with our moves. I really want that Toxic to hit the Porygon too. So let's see, we're going to see the Tapu Lele and Kartana lead, which is fine here, because I do lead off with my Slow King plus Arcanine here. Not sure if this is Focus Ash Kartana or not. I kind of just want to go for a Toxic into Kartana. I'm not sure if it stays in. I do have my Rindleberry plus the fact that Kartana's at minus one, so it won't really be doing too much damage. Yeah, so I'll just go for a Trick Room here. And a Toxic, even if, let's say, that Cartana attacks, I have Flamethrower on Slowking, so I'm not really too worried. I could see po uh, Porygon 2 coming out here, as we're going to see that Cartana withdraw, and actually Arcanine comes out, which is fine, because that's going to be pretty big, gain this Toxic off, and then I could just spam Surf anyway, so this Arcanine's not really much of a threat to my team. Let's see if it's like a Shattered Psyche or anything. Just a Moonblast, going to try to get some chip damage onto Slowking, which is fine because that means I don't take any damage with my Arcanine. That Moonblast really didn't do much. Luckily, no special attack drop. And we will get this Toxic off into that Arcanine, so that's pretty huge. I don't know if I want to start Surfing right away because my opponent might anticipate that. So I could definitely see my opponent anticipating that. I think I just want to go for Toxic in the Lele because I could see Shattered Psyche. This is one of the Shattered Psyches on... Um, the top of Lele, I could see a double up in the Slow King. I think the safe place is to slack off here and just go for a Toxic and get a bit of chip damage onto this top of Lele, start racking it up. I don't really see a drawback in this play. No protect coming out from my opponent, which is fine as I will get a slack off off. And let's see what my opponent decides to do. I wonder if it carries Wall Charge. Uh, missed a Toxic on top of Lele, not big of a deal. Wall Charge is actually going to come out from that Arcanine, okay. So if I can get Marowak in on a safe switch, I think that's fine. Psyche's just going to come out and target down my Arcanine. Okay. Getting a critical hit, which is a bit unfortunate. But it does proc my berry, so I guess I'll take the critical hit. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, let's see. That toxic damage is pretty nice. I think I want to start boosting up my Gashadon. Yeah, I think I'm just going to Surf here. And bring out my Gashadon. To be completely honest. And my opponent is just going to keep going for a Psychic anyway. That's fine. I don't care if you double up Slow King either. To be completely honest. I think my opponent brought the same four Pokemon. Unless maybe that last Pokemon will be Garchomp in the back. Instead of the Porygon too. But I'm going to start going for Surf here. I'm surprised it's, uh, no Shadow Psyche. But I guess my opponent doesn't consider it a threat. Arcanine's going to double out here in the Kartana. Which is fine. Because again I do have Flamethrower on my Slow King. 
And I do ooh, like my position here because I could potentially just slack off damage with Slow King right here. So we'll go for the Surf here. And that is going to do a nice amount as well as boost the special attack. And Moonblast is going to come out and target down my uh, Slow King. Okay. That shouldn't KO. Yep. And I can just go for slack off here. Slack off should be fine. I don't know if Kartana's going to protect or not. I could Hydro Vortex the Kartana just to be safe. But I think Tapu Le is much more of a threat to me because I think Tapu Le is more annoying to deal with. I'm not sure if I showed Flamethrower in the last game to my opponent. But Kartana could protect here. I could see a switch out, maybe going to Arcanine just to scout it. But Kartana's just going to protect. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, so that's nice because I get this slack off, which means I get to heal my Slow King. So it can potentially reset Trick Room later in the game, as well as the Hydro Vortex will go in the top of Lele. And at plus one, I'm pretty sure this is going to KO after that Surf Chip damage. If it doesn't, I'll be very, very upset. But I'm pretty sure this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go for the Hydro Vortex here. And we'll see. We'll just be able to knock out that Tapu Lele. I mean, Gastronaut isn't the strongest Pokemon. And I'm not exactly using the strongest Z-move I could use with the Hydro Vortex. But this is plus one. Yeah, that's going to KO. Nice. So Tapu Lele goes down. That's a huge threat away. Now I don't have to worry about Psychic in the end game. So my Marowak's looking very fantastic here. Depending on my opponent's last Pokemon. If it's Garchomp, that is kind of annoying, however. But Arcanine's going to come out indicating that it's probably not Garchomp. Arcanine might be in range of a Muddy Water as well, so this is looking very solid for me. I just don't know what my opponent has in the back. Maybe Porygon 2, but if it's Porygon 2, I feel very solid about this game. I think I'm just going to go for a Flamethrower here into Gartana and a Muddy Water because it does hit everything on my opponent's team. Muddy Water is going to do a lot to that Arcanine. I could slack off with Slow King potentially, but... I still have my Rindleberry intact, so I don't think this is too big of a deal. Arcanine could protect here, but if it protects, the poison should guarantee the range where it's at muddy water range. Or, if that is an offensive Arcanine because it revealed wall charge, I'm just going to be able to do a lot of damage to that muddy water. Maybe even pick up the knockdown Arcanine right here. So, no matter what, my opponent's in a tough, tough situation. Maybe has to rely on a double protect. Porygon 2 could come out here, yet even if Porygon 2 comes out, that's not really threatening my field right here. So... Gartan, I'm going to withdraw on that. It's Porygon 2. So my Marowak is looking very, very solid in this game. And the fact that my opponent doesn't really have a way that can knock out my uh, Slow King because of the fact it has only Ice Beam. So, we'll just Flamethrower here. If we get the Burn, I, well, I would prefer to get a Toxic off, to be honest. Muddy Water will connect here. Hmm... Okay, so, yeah, that poison damage should guarantee Muddy Water. And I'm pretty sure we have to see a double up in the Slow King here. You can't exactly go for a Wild Charge here. It's not a very safe play. I could see maybe a double back out into Gartana for the Arcanine, yet you're still going to be taking a lot of damage no matter what. As long as I get that, my opponent to his last two mons, I do win with just going for Parasong. In fact, I'm getting Marak in here because I get to save my Slow King number one, and I can Parasong. I also avoid a Wild Charge plus Ice Beam, which I don't think would knock out Slow King yet. It's just better to be safe than sorry. I could also see Toxic here, to be fair. But Marowak's going to come out. Wall Charge will go out into that Marowak slot. So, neuter the damage here, as we are going to see the Recover, actually, which isn't going to do much. I am going to grab my Charger, so I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I was able to get rid of Kartana. I do have my Charger on deck here. And this is pretty good as a position I could ever ask for, because I can just go for Parasong right here. And I think just switch on to Arcanine. I can pair Song to win this game. I don't have to worry about getting in Arcanine safely, so I have to go for a Toxic here. I'll just go for Pair Song. If my opponent protects, that's even better for me, to be honest. Uh, no reason to protect here. I guess worst case scenario is Night Slash Crits. Yeah, that's probably the only scenario. But yeah, since we saw Protect, most likely doesn't carry Night Slash. So, Kartana protects and we just go for Parasong and that will be game because I can just double protect this turn, switch out, even if this Kartana has a set of moves such as Sword Stance. Um, it can't knock out four Pokemon in only three turns. Well, you only get about one turn to attack actually because I'll just double protect here. Switch out and then get to protect again and no matter what I just win the game from there. So, the match is going to be forfeit and we will take a very dominant game. So... 
that's kind of what I was looking for in the beginning, but you know, rolls go in our way this time and we are able to take the game. So very nice, very nice. I do like starting that off here. But yeah, I'm at, yeah. Uh I guess the only thing I was really worried about wasn't Porygon 2 exactly, because I had ways to deal with Porygon 2. As you saw, like it would only really toxic. Ice Beam wouldn't do anything in the situation. That's why I'm not really worried about Porygon 2 as much as this team. It can be annoying though if it just spreads toxic a bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah, it has to get up toxics. And I have Parasong. I have my own toxic. I have ways to handle Porygon 2. As we find our second opponent, a Japanese rated player with a 1702 rating. Ah, huh, man. This brings me back. This is actually a very old team. Surprised it's not a QR code. Uh, this is Nature's Power team. This was a team based on Nature's Power. It's actually on the global link, I believe, for QR code. Which, uh, seen Nature's Power, Whimsicott, I think it was Scarf Bulu, Specs Feeny, I think it was Life Orb Coco, I don't remember the Metagross or Arcanine sets. So this is a bit problematic because obviously there's two grass types on the field. I do have Slowking, which could be nice. Uh, Marak does pretty well in this matchup if I can, but Muddy Water is very annoying against my team. I don't know what my opponent's going to bring exactly. This is a very tricky matchup for my opponent as well. I think Willis Arcanine can do well. This is hard because I don't know exactly what I want to bring. I don't think Trickum's the answer here. Trickum doesn't really help. Uh... Although, Gastronon does do well in Trick Room, so maybe it's worth it. Maybe I'll go Slow King. Ah, Slow King, Gastrodon, Marowak, Tapu Koko. Ah, that's not the right call. I kind of took too much time thinking because I do not, I do not know this matchup. This is a very tricky matchup because of the fact that Nature's Power can get Bloom Doom, Gigavolt Havoc options would be annoying. I also wanted to kind of navigate through the Metagross. I wish I had more time. I will eat Slow King Gashadon, which is not a good lead if it's Whimsicott Top of Bulu here. <laughs> ah, that's not good. Okay. So I should have let Arcanine, which is what I wanted to. Uh, I just clicked it too slow. Hmm. No matter what, if it's a Bloom Doom, the Rindle Berry could save my Slow King, though. You know what? I'm switching out Gashadon into Marowak and hoping Slow King can survive the Bloom Doom. Although it's very unlikely. This is Grassy Terrain Boosted Bloom Doom. I do have Rindle Berry, but <laughs> I just don't think I had. Oh, wait. Goes for Energy Ball? Oh, my Energy Ball. In a Marowak. Horn Leech. Okay, I'll definitely survive a Horn Leech. That is okay with me. That is okay with me, actually. So I get the trigger him up, which is what I want. And now and now I get to threaten with some... But Nature's Power is... The only problem with Nature's Power, it is priority. Hmm. I wonder if I can use that to my advantage, though. Okay, so Top of Blue is not really threatening here. Huh. I think the play here is to actually go out into my Tapu Koko to, to change it to Electric Terrain. And I have um, my Marowak on the field, so he's not really going to be able to do much. And I'll just Flare Blitz the Whimsicott slot. I'm not worried really much about Tapu Bulu here. I'm kind of worried about Whimsicott disrupting with Encore. And yeah, I'm Tapu Bulu might protect. I'm not sure if Whimsicott can carry Protect here. I'm not sure if this team carries it, but I will go to Coco because it saves me from Nature's Power here because it will change into Electric Terrain. It's how Blue is going to switch out actually into Arcanine. Okay, so I was very, very, very worried. <laughs> I was very worried for a second there because I was very worried that he was going to go into Feeny. Whimsicott's going to protect. That's fine. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Go for the Flare Blitz into the Whimsicott. 
Now I could just withdraw my Tapu Koko and go out into Slow King and just get a free Flare Blitz off. Nature's power is not going to do anything. I guess Feeny could come in. Uh, but I'll just Flare Blitz the Whimsicott because I think it's the best call no matter what. As Whimsicott's going to withdraw. And Tapu Feeny comes out. Okay. So my opponent's playing very well here. But... I can get. I think this is a position where Gashadon kind of wants to. The problem is, I am running low on Trick Room turns potentially. So I'll get my, my Slow King in here and Flare Blitz this Tapu Fini. And I'm pretty sure we're just going to see Flare Blitz into my Slow King slot, which. Flare Blitz with plus Extreme Speed, I'm not sure if that KOs. I'm hoping it doesn't. I am a very defensive Slow King. Ah, oh, that does so much. Although, I think it's a roll on Extreme Speed's part. But I will go for my Slack Off here. And I will just switch out Marowak. Because Marowak is pretty good to have. And go on to Gashadon. Hmm. So, I'm pretty sure my opponent goes for Moonblast here. Or Calm Mind. There's no way you should attack here with Muddy Water or Scald. Arcanine's actually going to withdraw. So, maybe double on the top of Boo. Very, very solid play. But... Again, I'm not sure my opponent realizes I have the Sludge Bomb, so I'm okay with this. And also, that means you can KO my Slow King this turn. So, Slow King will be able to survive on the field. Pretty sure you just went for Moonblast here. Or Muddy Water, because, well, there's no way I should Flare between the Arc Land this turn. So, yep, Moonblast does come out, and that should target down the Slow King. Yep. Oh, that is spec. Oh, oh, no, it's just a crit. Okay, so that's not specs. That was very worrying, though, if it was specs. <sighs> Let me turn to Trick Room. I wonder if he protects. Yet, yeah, I don't think you should protect because of the fact I could always just switch out no matter what. I think he might just try to go for momentum. I'm going to Surf and Sludge Bomb here. Uh, no, he, he goes for protect anyway. Okay. Okay, he, has, he goes for double protect. Can I win this game? I think the only way I win this game is predicting which slot he targets down with the top of Bulu. Because I'll live a Moonblast with Slow King. Hmm. I think I have to predict him to target down my Gashadon this turn. So I'm just going to protect here and go for Trick Room. And I have to hope that my opponent targets down the Slow King. Man, this game would have been a lot easier if I just let Arcanine. But yeah, it comes down to this turn. And if you target Slow King, that's really bad for me. Yet, I guess not the worst, because I get to bring in my Tapu Koko and go out into my Marowak. The problem is Tapu Blue is just doing so much damage. So let's see, if Bloom Doom comes out, that will K KO me through Protect. So let's see. Moonblast comes out in the Gashadon, and Horn Leech goes out into the Slow King. Okay. Ah, I should have just went for Sludge Bomb. I guess my opponent wasn't too worried with Whimsicott yet. If I KO the Top of Bull and just get rid of Terrain, I will. I, Gashadon would have been solid. Alright, going to Top of Coco here. Uh, if I go into Marowak here, uh, I don't see me winning this game. I think I just made very poor plays in this game. The, just leading, not leading right. I led, I led double water into double grass for crying out loud. Um, maybe if I get a double protect and hidden power fire this turn, and hidden power fire somehow two KOs. Gashadon's uh, plus one, so it can handle my opponent's team. But would I risk that? I think Marowak is the better call here. Tapu Fiend is going to withdraw into the Whimsicott. Okay. So I get my Marowak in at a decent timing. I don't think you should protect here. I definitely don't. So Marowak will come out. And we will get Hidden Power Fire off. Let's see how much this does to the top of Bulu. 
doesn't do as much as I was hoping for. Hornley's just going to come out and target down to Gashad Onslaught. So Marok will be able to eat that comfortably. Yet I'm still in a very hard situation. Um, Tapu Bulu should definitely be preserved for the Gashadon. I think the best play is to hit him power fire the Wimscott and shadow bone the top of Bulu in case he switches. I just don't see me winning this game still. No matter what, I can't find a way out of this predicament. I'm pretty sure he just goes out. Maybe he goes in the top of Fini and goes for a twinkle tackle. Top of Bulu is going to switch out and I'm guessing Arcanine or Fini is going to be top of Fini. So I'm guessing it's the twinkle tackle here. I'm guessing it's the twinkle tackle here. Wimsicott's going to protect, so at least I get a Shadow Bone off into the Tapu Fini. So, Shadow Bone's going to hurt the Tapu Fini. It's not going to pick up a KO by a long shot. Okay, I think I have to call something right. Okay, so obviously, Tapu Fini can go for a Muddy Water here, yet I could also see my opponent doubling back into Tapu Blue, going for a Z move, which would be Bloom Doom. Actually, his best play is to go for Bloom Doom right here. Yeah, his best play is to go for Bloom Doom right here. So I think I'm screwed anyway. He just goes for a uh, Bulu switch in and Bloom Dooms. Yep, Feeny is going to withdraw into Tapu Bulu. I got to hope for Hidden Power Fire to crit the Whimsicott. I think that's my only way of having a shot at this game. So let's see. Oh, wait, no, because Nature's Power is a uh, priority. We are going to see Z Nature's Power, and it should target in my Tapu Koko. If it targets down Marok, I think that's a bit strange. I mean, I think both are logical, but I think you want to get rid of Tapu Koko here. So Bloom Doom's going to come out. Oh, it actually does target my Marok. So if I protected, maybe I had a better shot, but... Uh... Okay, so if I protected there, I... Well, I guess I would still need Hidden Power Fire to crit because I'm pretty sure Bloom Doom into Energy Ball would have KO'd me regardless. Man, Specs Coco's not doing as much damage as I would have hoped for. Yeah, and I think that's game. I go into Gastrodon here, yet I can't do anything. <sighs> okay, so... Leading Double Grass... I mean, Double Water against Double Grass was not to play... Also, the fact that... Was there anything I could have really done? I should have brought Arcanine. I think Arcanine was much more helpful. Maybe I hope for a choke on his part by him not doubling up the Gashadon. Maybe he doubles up the Coco for some reason. Nature's Power is going to come out, turn the Energy Ball, and target my top of Coco. If he doubles up my Coco, that could be a choke. If I KO the Wimscott with Hand of Power Fire and then the Bulu goes down to my Sludge Bomb. Unfortunately, I don't get the KO on Wimscott and Horn Leech. Okay, goes into my Gashadon anyway. So I will lose the game. Uh, yeah, I'm not really content with how I played that game, but it's just a really hard start with the lead. I think the lead is what screwed me up the most. I think I should have went with my gut, just let Arcanine. Yet, I think the four I did bring also worked maybe if I just led differently hmm maybe if I led Marowak hmm yeah and that kind of shows how deadly nature's power can be if you know priority plus the fact that threatened by a Z move a bloom doom in terrain a gigavolt having terrain they're very powerful moves and the fact that it has priority just it's really hard to deal with it on some teams. Uh, let's see. What could I have done better? I think I think it just, if I led better, it would have been a much better case. Why did I lead double water again? Also, I'm glad I opted not to bring Tapu Bulu. But Tapu Bulu hasn't been shown in any of the games. And I think Tapu Bulu is decent on this team. So, I really do hope we get a game where Tapu Bulu can do its work. Get the Grassy Terrain up for my Gashadon. Because having that Grassy Terrain healing Gashadon is very nice on this team. Yet, we haven't really been able to showcase that. 
Also, maybe I should revamp the Coco spread because an offensive Coco might have helped the game a bit more. Although I don't think it mattered in that game specifically. Let's see, we got our opponent with the top of Atlanta, Garchomp, Celesteel, Arcanine, Whimsicott, and Tapu Koko. Oh, this is a very offensive team. This is a very old offensive team. I remember this back in the beginning of the format, actually. Oh, boy. Whimsicott is a very annoying Pokemon. I don't know if it's Prankster or Infiltrator on this. Well, not Infiltrator. Actually, is it Infiltrator on this team? It could be Infiltrator. Or maybe it was Chlorophyll. Okay, so... Let's see. How do I want to handle this team? I don't want to time out like the last game. I think Slowking plus Arcanine is very fine as a lead here. Man, I don't think Tapu Bulu is going to help at all again in this game. I think Gastron is pretty solid. And I think Marowak is solid in the back as well. Let's see how this is going to go. Because I definitely need Marowak to keep the Coco in check. The things I'm worried about, one, what kind of Whimsicott that is. Because Prankster could be annoying to my team, depending on the case. Two, Lele could also be very, very dangerous. It's going to be Tapu Koko Garchomp as the lead. Okay. Hmm. I don't know if it's Z-Move or Scarf on this team. Because there are many different variants. So, Koko's Electric Train is going to go up. I will get Intimidate off onto the Coco, Coco and Garchomp. Really, it only matters on Coco if it was like a wild charge variant which it could be i don't think it would be on this team though best play here is the trick room and just switch on to marowak if he sd's up i guess it's the question of can slowking can live a plus one tectonic rage if he has sky drop if he's nature's madness plus tectonic rage that shouldn't knock out slowking by a long shot so i should be okay for the most part Another play I could have done was Willis, but obviously I don't want to take the electric type move. I'm not sure my opponent is going to go for electric type move. Maybe dish. Oh, is this discharge? He is discharge. That's that's the only reason you lead this. That's the only reason. I just realized that's the only reason you would lead this against it. And that's tectonic rage coming. And we get paralyzed, but I'm pretty sure tectonic rage will just finish this off here. He goes for a rock slide. Okay, Slow King, please pull through. Oh my lord, you actually did pull through. Okay, that's actually very, very nice. Okay. I will surf here, and I'm going to try to power my Gastron as fast as I can. I know Slow King's not going to be able to survive another turn. So I want to get at least one plus one with my Gastron. It was actually... I don't know why my opponent went for Rock Slide. Maybe you don't have Tectonic Rage. Yet, yeah, I'm pretty sure this team would. Life of Coco. Actually, probably a Z move on Lele then. Coco's gonna withdraw. I don't know who's coming out. Salcila. When I could have Flare Bliss last slot? Okay. Maybe thinking I'm worried about the Garchomp, but I'm not really worried about the Garchomp. Oh, and Garchomp protects, so that means Soul King lives for another turn. So I get a Surf off. Again, I'm not really worried about Gastron. I'm more worried about this Garchomp at the uh, hands of this matter. Oh, the game's moving very slowly. It's not my. It's not the actual video. It's act the actual game. Okay. Leftovers. I don't really care about Celesteela. I do have my Marowak specifically for that Celesteela, and I do have Arcanine, so pretty solid against Celesteela. I need to get rid of Garchomp ASAP. He might conserve Garchomp, but I'm gonna try to go for the KO right here. And also, I, I'm not sure. Can oh, he lets me KO this Garchomp here potentially. Well, it's not AB Garchomp since it protected. It has to be very specially defensive. Otherwise, it's taking a Surf plus a Hydro Vortex. And getting rid of Garchomp is huge. One, Coco's not really big of a threat to my Gastrodon. Plus Marowak in the back. So, has, he has to be relying on his last Pokemon like immensely. So, Hydro Vortex is going to come out. That will target down the, Ga the Garchomp. So, I will be able to knock out the Garchomp. Question is, what does Celestial go for? Leech Seed? Or is it Heavy Slam? Oh, Leech Seed, okay. In the Gastron, that's fine. 
Kind of surprised my opponent's not trying to pick up KOs because every time the Slow King goes for Surf, the more that Gastrodon gets powered up, and my opponent can't really afford Gastrodon powering up too much. Then again, my opponent doesn't have a solid answer to Gastrodon. And I just realized it could have been Giga Drain on this Celestial since the old team used to run uh, AV. So that could have been very scary, but I guess I didn't mind Gastron going down if I got rid of the Garchomp in exchange. Oh, Arcanine's gonna come out, okay. So I'm pretty sure you have to last ditch Extreme Speed. And Marowak's looking very solid in this endgame here. And I'm pretty sure Extreme Speed's gonna come out, so I'm actually gonna go hard into Marowak. I think that's a fine play here. And I'll just Muddy Water for a chip. Arcanine might protect here or go for extreme speed. Either way is fine. I get Marowak in for basically free. The only way is like Tectonic Rage on one of these Pokemon. Like if it's like Dig or Boldos on the Arcanine and Earthquake on the Celesteela. So get Marowak in. Arcanine's going to protect which is fine. Because I don't really need to power up my Gashon anymore. And I could always just sack Slow King in the late game. So no matter what, I am in a very solid position. Muddy Water is going to do a decent amount to the Celesteel too, and could get an Accuracy Drop, which would be pretty nice here. Guess the Accuracy Drop, very nice, as just a Leech Seed actually into the Slow King slot. Okay. Yeah, that's not really going to save my opponent. I guess the only problem is that Marowak is my most solid answer to dealing with the Celesteel, so if it takes too much damage potentially it could be a problem so i think i want to save marowak and go out into my i think the best place to go out into my arcanine here and just go for muddy water yeah i want to save marowak keep it healthy i definitely want to keep it healthy so i'll just muddy water here because it just gets a lot of damage on no matter what he wants to bring out and i will just go out into my arcanine because arcanine isn't exactly the most useful pokemon here and I think Arcanine next to Marowak actually could win this game. So, bring out Arcanine. Get the Intimidate off into Celesteel. So, Heavy Slams won't be doing any damage to my team. As Celesteel protects, as it should. And let's see, does this... I could Shadow Bone and Muddy Water, but I didn't want to risk Muddy Water missing. And then Arcanine gets a bunch of damage on my Marowak. I think Marowak's more solid to win this game since I have Flamethrower on my Arcanine. It's not exactly as solid. As Muddy Water, yeah, almost able to pick up the Knockout on Arcanine. I'm actually glad I didn't pick up the Knockout because this Arcanine is basically useless unless it has Toxic. And he has Snarl, so that's even better actually because my Gastron will definitely be able to eat this up. Yes, he did lower my special attack, but I'm still at a plus one stage. I should be able to knock out the Arcanine. Actually, am I able to knock out the Arcanine? Hmm. All I really need is Gastron healthy though. To take on the top of Coco, because Dazzling Gleam Life Orb is still not going to do too much. Terrain disappears from the battlefield as well as Trick Room. I can go for Toxic here in the Arcanine, I guess. And I'll just recover the damage with Gashadon, because I do want Gashadon a bit healthy for this game. As. <sighs> why do. Why can't I hit a Toxic? I don't know why, but I haven't been able to hit. I guess this was like in the beginning format, I couldn't hit a Toxic to save my life, and now I can't hit a Toxic to save my life still. So, that kind of sucks for my Gashadon. Oh well. Muddy Water should still be a 2 KO on that Celesteela, and it doesn't have Beast Boost yet. If it was sub, I would actually be worried, but I'm pretty sure it's Flanter, so I shouldn't have too much of a reason to worry about it. I'll just Willis to Celesteela here and go for Muddy Water, because Muddy Water is a 2k on Arcanine now. I don't need the Toxic Damage anymore. And I'll just Willis Celesteela, so it really can't do much. If it wants to go for Flanter, that's fine. It's not doing any damage. Hmm. The problem is this Leech is going to add up to my team over time. Let's see what my opponent decides to do. Celesteel is actually going to protect, which is okay. I'm pretty sure Snarl is going to come out. And I didn't need a Toxic this turn, so... Unless Muddy Water... Okay, so we're at minus one now. Let's see how much this Muddy Water does, because that's what's going to matter. I still think this Muddy Water is going to do a decent amount to the Arcanine. If we connect... Okay, we do connect. I thought I was going to jinx it with all the Toxics. Uh, Muddy Water... Yeah, even if we go down one more stage, I still think I'll be able to survive. Plus that Arcanine, 
did get an accuracy drop, which is nice. So Snow is already a bit of an inaccurate move, 95. So maybe he'll miss one. I definitely want a will o to sell a Steela, though, here. And I do want to go for a Muddy Water. Hmm. I guess the way my opponent could win is if it's a random Hidden Power Ground Tapu Koko or Dazzling Gleam Crits, along with a Flamethrower Crit. Although I don't think that will actually KO Marowak. Arcanine might want to switch out here. I could definitely see it. You might want to preserve the, Mar the Arcanine, but oh, Celesteel is actually going to be saved. Huh, not sure if that's the play. So Tapu Koko is going to come in. And Arcanine protects, that's fine. I I guess he'll preserve his Arcanine the following turn then. I'll go for Willow's Pier. So I get some a bit of residual damage, and that life orb's gonna start adding up over time. Muddy Water is gonna go out into Tapu Koko. Yeah, that does a decent amount. Oh, uh, but he's gonna get two sets of Leech Seed. Okay. Hmm. This game might have gotten a bit more trickier, but the good thing is, since his Tapu Koko's on the field, he can't Leech Seed my. He can't really Leech Seed my. My Pokemon again. Hmm. Maybe I should switch out Gastrodon. Yeah, I should probably switch out Gastrodon. I'm actually going to Toxic the Arcanine here. What is he going to do? Thunderbolt plus... I don't know. I think my gut is telling me he's going to switch out the Arcanine. Go out into his Celesteela. He might Gleam though. You know what, I'm going to Willis the Arcanine and Muddy Water. Either way, I get something. I either get the Willowisp onto that Celesteela slot, or I get the Muddy Water KO. So, we are going to see a Celesteela come out. And if he wants to Dazzle and Gleam, that's fine here. It's just going to be Thunderbolt. Okay, so I could have made that play into Marowak. Um, a bit annoying, yet I get the free switch into Marowak, which is completely okay. And Celesteela can't lead to my Gastron anymore. So I get the Muddy Water Chip damage, which is pretty nice. With the burn, well, Leechy's still going to recover. I still think I'm playing this game like how I should. Like, Shadow Bone's going to KO the Tapu Koko, regardless. I'm just wondering if I should Flare Blitz here, or if I should just go for the Shadow Bone. I think the best play here is to recover with Gashadon no matter what. But the question is, what do I do with my Marowak? Because I could see Celesteela withdrawing into Arcanine. Hmm, if Celesteela withdraws to Arcanine, it's a problem. But if he leeches, that's also a problem. Well, I think Flareblitz to Celesteela is fine because I would knock out Arcanine at the range of that. And I'll just recover my, with my Gashadon. Okay, so Celesteela is going to withdraw. But I'm pretty sure I do knock out the Arcanine, so I don't mind this play. I guess the question is how much does Dazzling Gleam do to my team? But he's still going to be taking Life Orb Recoil. Yeah, and he protects, which is kind of what I expected him to do, to be honest. Because if I, if he risked that, I didn't think it would have been solid. But Flare Blitz is going to come out. I think he expected maybe Shadow Bone or something. Uh, Flare Blitz will knock out the Arcanine at 1. So that is great, because all I have to do really is just switch out my Marowak and preserve it. Recover with my Gastrodon. And now I can start going for a chip damage onto this Tapu Koko with my Sludge Bomb. Dazzling Gleam is not going to do much. He can't Leech Seed my Gashadon again, so he can't really heal with Celesteela. All I got to do is play this Tapu Koko right. And Dazzling Gleam shouldn't do too much to my Gashadon, so either way I should be fine. He'll probably just... I don't know. Would he be forced to protect Celesteela? Because I could Shadow Bone the Koko and end this game. Yet, I feel like the safest play no matter what. With how much the Muddy Waters did, I think the best play is just to Sludge Bomb the Tapu Koko. Because Sludge Bomb should do a healthy amount, even at minus one. You saw how much the Muddy Waters were doing to that Tapu Koko. So, I think that Sludge Bomb would still do a very solid amount no matter what. 
And he is forced to go for Dazzling Gleam here. He can't go for an Electric type move. Dazzling Gleam will do a decent amount of Gashon, but not too much. Takes the life of Recoil, which is nice. Heavy Slam's gonna go out to Marok, okay? Sludge Bomb will come out. Not doing too much, though. Hmm. Okay, okay, okay. This might be a bit of a boring game, I'm not gonna lie, but I still feel like it's very possible for me to lose this game. Maybe I should just Parish Song, actually. Actually, Parish Song might be my best answer here. Yeah, because I don't want to die to Flare Blitz Recoil no matter what. And Tapu Koko is going to protect. I thought Tapu Koko had to either protect because if he gleamed into another Sludge Bomb, I would have... Because um, let's say I switch out Marok and Sack it. No, sw Sack my Slow King. I go for Sludge Bomb into Koko. He no longer has the Dazzling Gleam pressure. So I'll go for Parasong here. And this should guarantee me the game. The problem was how much that Heavy Slam did. If Heavy Slam and the Dazzling Gleam would have killed, that might have been it. But I had to risk on a 50-50, I think, with Coco Protector or not. And if I lived with just 1 HP, the result would have been the same. No matter what, I think I would win this game. And now the Parish Song is up, so all I have to do is Protect Stall. Actually, I don't think Dazzling Gleam would actually KO Marox, so I think I did make the right play. So I'll just protect Marok, go for another recover here, I think is very safe. Because no matter what, he can't knock out Gashon, even with double crits. Dazzling, and if he had Giga Drain, he would have went for it a long time ago. So Dazzling Gleam's going to come out in a Gashadon. Not going to do too much. And Heavy Slam's going to go out into Marok, as I will get a recover off. And the Gastrodon's slower anyway. Since my opponent can't beat Gastrodon, I, I will win this game anyway. And the problem with... The only reason I was having problems was... Because if he Dazzling Gleam, Heavy Slam, and let's say I go for the KO on the top of Coco. Or if I Flare Bits Celesteela. If I Flare Bits to Celesteela, I lose HP, which means Marowak goes down. And Tapu Coco could be a bit scary if he crits my, ga my Gastrodon with a Dazzling Gleam with, at the range it was at. So I think this was the most solid play to win the game. And I will just sack my Slow King here. Just protect my Gashadon and then yeah, I think I just win the game. So Marak retreats, goes down to Slow King. I just protect here. Very safe play. And Dazzling Gleam should come out once again. Yep. Maybe I should have, well, he can't really be, well, maybe I should have scouted how much Dazzling Gleam does, if it, does it actually KO my Marowak, but I don't want to risk, like, let's say, Celesteela and Gashadon randomly speed tie, because that could be an actual possibility. So all I had to do, bring on my Marowak and then protect, and that, I just win the game. Because Par this is the last turn of Parish Song after... I really am curious if Dazzling Gleam does KO my Marowak. I'm pretty sure it doesn't, though. I'm pretty sure Dazzling Gleam it just falls really, really short on it. I'd probably live with, like, one or two, I think. But, you know, just to be safe, I'll just protect here and recover up, and that will be the game. Nothing my opponent can do. So, how I played this game, I don't... Okay, so turn one was very scary after I realized, oh wait, Discharge is an option for my opponent. Maybe I shouldn't go for this. There's the crit friend of Dazzling Gleam, but... Okay, so turn one, Discharge was very scary. But then my opponent went for Rock Slide, and then went for, like, Paraflinch. And, yeah, I don't... If my opponent had Tectonic Rage, you'd definitely go for it. Maybe my opponent just didn't have a Z-Move. Maybe it was, like, AB Guard Chomp or something, so didn't have the ability to actually... 
knock out my slow king with a double target so maybe had to go for the hacks yet yeah, I don't know if you have Tapu Koko plus like if you have Tapu Koko plus Garchomp and you're gonna lead it and your way of beating slow king is literally discharge plus rock slide I don't think that's the most solid game plan for it to be honest I don't think it is then again, maybe he could have went like fake tears may I don't know if his Whimsicott or Tapu Koko would have been faster, but if you, if they sometimes run a Modest Coco on that team, so it's slower than Whimsicott by one point, so if he did have that option, he could just fake tears Discharge, uh, risk the para on the Whimsicott, and just kill the Slow King turn one. I think that would have been very, very beneficial to my opponent, but who knows, that's my opponent. I don't know the spreads or anything, but I do hope everyone enjoyed today's episode of VDC. 17 Backflick Vows. It, it was actually quite a long one, though. 40 something minutes jeez but i hope everyone enjoyed if you did please leave a like down below on the video i really appreciate it sorry for a bit of slow game a bit of a few slow games the second game i didn't really play well but that's kind of nature of this team it kind of tends to play slow just setting up that gastrodon just keep up the bulk and momentum with surf getting a bit of chip damage overall and then maybe getting a pair song in the late game that's how this team likes to play but anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out the other videos, check them out the, down below. My social medias, my Twitch channel. And I think that's pretty much all I want to say. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And I'll see you around in another video.